Here we are solving a pair of simultaneous equations. We've got this red quadratic equation, which is graphed over here as the red parabola, and we've got this blue linear equation, graphed over here as this blue straight line, and uh, this is a quadratic equation because it's got uh, x squared in it, and this one's a linear equation because the highest value of x, the highest power of x is 1. So what do we do? What are we after? We're after this point here, 1, 4, which is a point that is on this line, and it's on the red line. All right, and this point 7, 10 is also on the blue line and on the red line simultaneously. So that's what we're doing. When we're solving them, we're after these two points. So in this region over here, from the, down here, we have the blue line is less than the red line. This region in the middle, the blue line is greater than the red line. And over here, the blue line is less than the red line again. So for any particular x value, say x equals 8 here, the blue line is less than the value of the red line. So we're after these two points here, where they are equal. So how do you find where they're equal? Well, you make y the subject of both the equations. So we have added 10 to both sides of this equation, and we have added x to both sides of this equation, and we have y equals x squared minus 7x plus 10, and y equals x plus 3. So what we do when the values are the same, these y values are the same for both lines, this value must be the same as that value, which means that this bit must be the same as that bit. So that's what we're doing. We call it substituting the quadratic equation into the linear equation. And you end up with x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to x plus 3. So that's, and then we find the x values that make this mathematical sentence true. So, and it'll turn out to be x equals 1 for that point, and x equals 7 for that point. But let's go through the example and see it all happen. So you solve for x. You move all the terms over to the left hand side and set it equal to 0, because when it's equal to 0 you can use the null factor law. So you've got moved all these terms over, you've subtracted x from both sides, and you've sub add and subtracted 3 from both sides, and then you collect like terms, so you've got x squared minus 8x plus 7, this minus 7x and this minus x together give you minus 8x, and this plus 10 and minus 3 together give you plus 7. Then you factorise, you look for the factors of positive 7 that add together to give negative 8, and that's minus 7x there and minus 1x there will give you minus 8x, and then 7 multiplied by 1 will give you the 7. And then you use the null factor law to say if, that, if two things multiplied together are equal to 0, then one of them must be 0. So you say either that one is 0 or that one is 0. And so if this one is 0, it gives you x is equal to 7, because 7 minus 7 would be 0. Or x is equal to 1, because 1 minus 1 would be 0. And then we substitute the x values that we've found into the original linear equation. Well, you can see before we do that, that uh, when x is equal to 7, that's going to be that point there. And when x is equal to 1, you're going to get that point there. So you substitute into the linear equation, basically because it's less maths. If you substitute into the quadratic equation, you have to do more work. You have to square it, and then multiply it by 7, and then add 10. Here, you just have to add 3 to it, if you choose this equation. They would both come out with the same answer, and in fact, you could substitute it into both equations and check that they both give you the same answer. But we're just going to do this one here, because we never make mistakes. Aren't we clever? Um, so y equals 10, and y equals 4, especially not when the computer's doing the maths. And uh, x equals 7 and y equals 10. That's that point there, x equals 7 and y equals 10. Or x equals 1 and y equals 4. That point there. And then writing it in a, in a sentence, this means that the graphs of the equations intersect at 7, 10 and 1, 4, as you can see here. And so if you drag the, uh, you click on these lines and drag them around, you can change the equation of the lines. They all are updated, and it changes the uh, maths. And the, when you get to this stage here, you can't solve this by inspection anymore. You've got to use the quadratic formula and find the third values. X is 4 minus root 12, and X is 4 plus root 12, which would give you, you know, roughly 0.54 and roughly 7.46.
to two decimal places. But the point is, when we're solving the linear equations, we're after two pairs of points that are on both lines. So this point is on both lines, and this point here is on both lines. That's what we're after when we are solving the simultaneous equations. Lots of steps, but we're after two points at the end of it all.